Hi everyone. So in my last couple of tutorials, I went through the process of senescence and what the consequences of senescence are. And today I'm going to continue with this focus. I'm going to look at senescence, particularly in the immune system. So in the context of the immune system, the senescence phenomena has been termed immunosenescence, and it essentially refers to the gradual deterioration of immune function that occurs with age. So after the landmark studies of Hayflick and Moorhead, which were done in fibroblasts, lots of researchers started to investigate whether senescence happens in other somatic cell types. So epithelial cells, which are your skin cells, and endothelial cells, which are the cells that line the inner part of our blood vessels, and hepatocytes, which are your liver cells. And they found that all of these cell types were also subjected to cellular senescence. So during the same time that scientists were confirming senescence in other cell types, Immunologists had actually discovered a novel cytokine, which we now know as IL-2, and this promoted T-cell proliferation in culture. And basically it meant that these cells were able to grow indefinitely. So this gave immunologists the belief that immune cells were actually immortal. However, later studies that actually analysed these cell populations properly found that these T-cells had karyotype abnormalities, which means that basically their chromosomes had been altered. So this was just an artefact of the actual culturing, and it's now actually firmly established that similar to other cell types, T cells and other immune cells can also undergo replicative senescence. However, senescence doesn't affect all of the immune system in the same way. So to give a really brief recap of the immune system, it's broken into both the innate and the adaptive immune system. And our innate immune system is an extremely rapid and short-lived arm of the immune system. So neutrophils, for example, which are the most abundant type of immune cells, so they make up around 60% of our total white blood count. But they are extremely short-lived, so they actually only live for maybe one to two days. And because of that, they can't really get affected by senescence in the same way as most of our other cell types. And this is the case for a lot of our innate immune cells. So the total number of immune cells doesn't really decrease with age. And this, as I said, is because they're short-lived and unlike the adaptive immune system, they don't develop any memory. And once they've done their job, they essentially just die. But that doesn't mean that aging doesn't affect the innate immune arm at all. So as I mentioned in the Why We Age tutorial, older individuals tend to experience this low-grade chronic inflammation, even in the absence of any infection. And this was termed inflammaging. And this is predominantly due to the fact that the innate immune cells that are being generated are dysfunctional or dysregulated in some way and that they're producing a lot more cytokines and pro-inflammatory environment and that's why they're contributing to inflammaging. So because our adaptive immune cells are able to develop memory and they're extremely long-lived, they are actually particularly sensitive to senescence. Um, so this is B and T cells which make up our adaptive immune system can become senescent. So senescent B cells have been shown to secrete significantly less antibody than non-senescent B cells. And the antibodies that they do secrete tend to have a decreased affinity for antigen. So by this I mean that the strength of the interaction between the antibody and the antigen is much weaker. Senescent T cells have been shown to significantly increase with age. And this is in part due to the fact that during T cell development, our T cells migrate out of the bone marrow where they first originate and into the thymus in order to mature. However, as we age, our thymus shrinks, which leads to a decrease in the new number of naive T cells. So this means you end up with the majority of your T cells being terminally differentiated senescent cells. And these become much harder to activate, and they also become much more inflammatory even under normal basal conditions. So both B and T cells have also been shown to have a senescence-associated secretory phenotype, or a SASP, which I talked about in the previous tutorial with regards to fibroblasts, although the kinds of things that they're secreting are slightly different. So due to B and T cell senescence, older individuals tend to have an impaired responsiveness to vaccinations because they can't mount strong enough immune responses. And they also have a greater susceptibility to any new and emerging infectious diseases because their naive B and T cell pools are highly depleted. And they also tend to develop various age-related diseases such as type 2 diabetes and cancer. So because of the negative impacts that senescence and immunosenescence is having on older individuals, there's an increasing need to try and understand the biological mechanisms behind them in greater detail. And there's also a huge rush to try and find ways that we can either stop or slow down the aging process to stop this huge health burden. So if you want to find more about 
sort of scientific research that's going on to try and stop aging and I'm talking more about you know actual biological mechanisms rather than anti-aging creams or anything like that then please subscribe and keep an eye out for my next tutorial